Hi again, guys. I am home. This is the home where I grew up in. Uh, I flew last Friday back to the U.S. I'm in Indiana now, and I'm looking out over at the um, at Lake Michigan, uh, where I used to swim a lot, where I used to grow up. I wanted to talk about, uh, this is still about NMN. This is about the whole experience, about coming home as this sort of revived person and then uh, people noticing, hey, you lost weight, hey, you look good, uh, and just kind of uh, gives me an opportunity to right away say, yeah, I found a, a supplement plan that's working for me. Uh, I don't always dive right into that, but why not? Might as well, right? Um, but the bottom line was taking the flight. Um, I wanted to share some of the experience of that. I used to fly a lot when I was in the audio industry and um, it was much, much easier uh, now than it has been in years past. You know, impossible to say. It's all anecdotal how much of that is due to taking NMN, how much of that is due to diet, exercise. It's an overall plan, as you guys have heard me say many times. I can just say um, it was more adventure this time than challenging. I was just really calm and steady throughout the whole trip. Um, the on, There was the only moment where it got slightly uncomfortable was the last hour it was a nine hour flight as you can imagine but i never got like i never had cramp never cramped up um i didn't have any desire for the free alcohol they give you on the flight in years past i'd always jump on that have two or three drinks uh just to sort of numb me for the flight but i didn't need it matter of fact um i was creative during the trip um i was relaxed i was in coach you know, in the past, I'd fly so much, I'd rack up miles and I'd upgrade, you know, to, to business class usually. And uh, it was a lot better. You could lay down. Um, but I didn't didn't miss it at all. Matter of fact, I probably slept of that nine hours, probably slept a good three, four hours. And it was a daytime coming over from Europe. It was Frankfurt to Chicago. And I was pretty straightforward looking over my notes here about it. Um, I also didn't have the urge to shop. And I don't I don't know why that is that stands out to me, but I'd go through. I would buy things uh, on the trip: a bottle of water, a, a food, or maybe some stuff in the shop. I was always like feeling this urge. I just kind of breeze through. I thought, eh, they'll give me water when they give me water. They give me plenty of water. They fed us well uh, in coach on the way over. I had uh, pesto chicken and rice. I had a salad. Um, I had a sandwich a little bit later. It's not the usual stuff I eat, but I did fine. I, I took it in fine and I drank water. I didn't drink anything else. I didn't need any stimulants. I didn't have any coffee. Um, in the morning I had a little bit on the way and that was it. And I was able to, yeah, it was it, I guess that helped me sleep. Um, had a better, I had more patience towards, you know, some of the rudeness that you encounter when you're traveling, especially international travel. I don't need to point out the times, but you know, airport workers, are stuck in the airport all day. They're not always the, the most uh, cordial of people. Um, and uh, that was pretty much the long and short of it. Like I said, that last hour, I was ready to get out, but I wasn't like, um, in, I wasn't suffering. And I had to take some trains. Uh, wife dropped me off at the airports. We live pretty close to the Frankfurt airport, so that was pretty easy. But I took a couple trains because my parents, uh, we, they don't need to be coming to the airport in the evening in Chicago and going through all the traffic. We live in Indiana. It's about an hour and a half trip, and the trains are easy. I took a train downtown. I walked around downtown a few minutes, took the train home, and none of it. I never got exhausted, never got bothered. I'm going to say that after the fact, I've heard David Sinclair state that um, he doesn't have uh, jet lag anymore. I did experience some jet lag. However, I still felt good. My mood was good. Visiting with my folks, um, they're 84 and 90 and, you know, but they were doing great and it was really nice. It's been just amazing. I'm going to be here another five days. It's been another, it's been so amazing to have time with them and feel myself again and kind of share that with them has been, uh, has been really cool. Uh, my mom's downstairs doing some, some office slash creative type work she does in her uh, lab, <laughs> um, in her workshop of wonders. Um, she's an amazing card maker and she does all kinds of really cool creative things and she's as active as can be. So I do have some good stock there. Um, I'm, I'm not gonna get into uh, supplement stuff with family members. I can just say another interesting that came up thing that came up is I, 
I like I'm encountering so many people with so many different ailments. Now it's sort of an empty nester community, so you're going to see and meet, you know, talk to people. And um, I only talk to one or two about the stuff that I'm doing because I just don't want to be, you know, too intrusive. Uh, if they ask, then I'll say something. But uh, I do find that it's really, really interesting. A uh, little side note is I, I may have, I mentioned to you guys, you may remember, I'm on a panel that's introducing NED shots. Uh, and I moderated this, not a panel, but I moderated a, some interview. And there's an introduction in a few weeks going on in Japan for NED Plus with the NED Clinic. And uh, I did, I'm hearing more and more positive things going on in Japan with NED Plus treating Parkinson's patients. Uh, I have a whole list of them, uh, dementia, COVID, Alzheimer's, and even post-cancer recovery treatment. So a lot of stuff that I'm going to be covering. I'm going to be sharing some of the uh, video and information uh, from that introduction that they're doing with a, a top surgeon in Japan who's been treating for the past uh, over, just over a year with NED Plus for these ailments in Japan and having just great success. So that's been really uh, positive. And um, yeah, that, you know, the that's really been my experience coming home. It seems like NMN's kind of following me around. A doctor posted a really cool comment I'll share here below about uh, basically just really supportive of my last video. He loves the routine. He's 51. He's a family practitioner, and he's got his own. And I looked him up. I think he's in Ohio, which is really nearby. Uh, and then a family member asked me for a link about NMN. What is, is it about? And I looked on this government website, and it turns out the doctor that posted that's in Illinois. And then when we're talking to um, the uh, uh, Dr. Watakai, who is in uh, in um, Japan, and I asked him, "How'd you hear about NAD Plus originally?" And it was a, it was a, oh, I have the notes here. But he heard about it in a clinic in San Francisco. So it's really interesting the network that exists around the world that you may not think that may surprise some people how widespread it's getting and how cool it is. I wanted to point out something about a recent video where I said David Sinclair was wrong and, and specifically what I was talking about was uh, about NAD shots. And they're, they're doing intracellular, extracellular measurements and it is getting into the cells when they do these injections and infusions. It does cost more. I'm not advocating it. I'm just covering it. I'm just sharing the information about it. And I find it really interesting. And that's why I volunteered. I'm not being paid to uh, moderate the introduction to Japan because I think it's really exciting that all of these patients are getting this treatment. They're going to need a maintenance plan going forward. And I'm sort of throwing out there, hey, maybe the take NMN going forward. So that's kind of being discussed at very high levels between these businesses, these business entities that represent the, those two sides, at least a couple of the businesses. You know, it's, it's impossible to turn all the ships in an ocean, but we're kind of slowly turning the ocean. <laughs> so uh, just by public awareness, asking your doctors, I'm running around telling everybody, ask your doctors what they know about NED+. Uh, plus. Most of them, what I'm finding well, I won't say most of them, but recently I've been hearing uh, stories about them, hearing of NED, but not NMN, you know, so that's kind of interesting. It's, it's good just to throw this out there. I encourage you again, discuss with your doctors, bring them up, get your blood tests. If you're starting a new routine or adding something to your routine, get those blood tests, take those biomarkers, take your vitals, and track this stuff and see for yourself what it's doing for you because individuality is very interesting. There are different results for different individuals, different extremes of results, different amounts of significance. And I've been talking about NMN. We know this from our previous uh, discussions about the topic and comments about the topic. But it seems to be also similar with NED injections, people feeling the efficacy at either different intensity levels, I feel significant improvements, I feel somewhat significant or you know slightly significant or just minor improvements. And then there is still that 10 to 15%, ironically, with infusions similar to uh, NMN. So there is an, a similar breakdown that they're seeing and this is really real time. Like this is real time information that we're getting from clinicians who are treating 
patients. Um, some of these diseases, and we're going to talk, be talking more about this with uh, Dr. Philip Scheudla in Munich, but some of these um, diseases are actually more related to intracellular, some of them extracellular. And it turns out that the speed at which people or the amount at which people feel benefits depends on those illnesses. And that was a, uh, an interesting signal that it could be that people have different conditions that are somewhat either affected intracellular or outside the cells, extracellular, where the neural sensors are picking up the, uh, the NAD and reacting to that. So some really interesting stuff, and that's helping to sort of, sort of explain this inconsistency in results and efficacy um, based on different body types, different people, uh, male, female, getting different results. Uh, that's been very interesting as well. And uh, going to be talking a lot more about this because it does fall in line. I mean, NAD boosting is NAD boosting. And I will leave you guys with the, with the, with the point that I really want to make. Don't get hung up on, is it NR? I know the NR crowd, I don't understand it, but they seem very adamant about NR is better than NMN. I don't really, you know, it's better for you, that's great. And get your NED levels up and experience what you experience. Hopefully it's positive. It's been very positive for a lot of people, um, but it doesn't matter how. And that's why we talk about AMP pathway, and that's why we talk about uh, different ways to bring it up like exercise and so one leads to another, and you, and, and you can build that up, these things, even circadian rhythms. Even Dr. Scheutler agrees very much with the statements of David Sinclair that these things can bring up your NED levels. So we're getting really some high-value sources of information, sources of experience with patients. Um, to give you an example, they've treated over 130. Now, that's very new. It's just over a year. But in Japan, they've treated over 130 patients by this, in this one clinic with this one doctor overseeing it, and he's been experiencing this 80-90% improvement. So it's it's not tiny numbers, you know, it's a little bit less than what we deal with as a whole on this channel with people um, chiming in, but similar results, similar breakdown. So it's encouraging, it's interesting, and it remains an ongoing story that's changing by the day, and I'll keep talking about it. Um, I'll leave you with some uh, uh, images of me going down uh, from the backyard uh, and down to the beach and just enjoying it. And I'm still contemplating whether I'm going to uh, dive into that water or not. It's 50 degrees, but you know, cold water therapy. Uh, Wim Hof, thank you. Thank you for putting that in my head that I might actually jump in. It's November and I might jump in Lake Michigan. It's really nice and sunny and 70 today. So at least when I get out, I can warm up a little better, but we'll see if I can do it. Um, stay tuned. I'll talk to you guys soon.